I'm Deborah Richman. I'm standing in front of a utility quilt. Now you may know I collect utility quilts. I absolutely love them for a lot of different reasons. I love them because they often have a lot of chaos happening in them. These are quilts that were not planned to be in a quilt show. These were not planned maybe even to be given as gifts. They are just quilts that um, have lots of different reasons why quilters will make utility quilts. You can look at these quilts and you can find out a lot about the quilter and I like to look and see kind of dissect how it is this quilt probably came together and this one I find really interesting for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I believe that this quilt started with the um, star blocks that you see there are an even number of them. I think that these were blocks that either were meant to go into a quilt or these were left over from a quilt. You can see that even those blocks are not really carefully planned because some of them have a lot of contrast in the pinwheel here in the middle and then some do not have the contrast. You can see though it gives you a nice a big difference in how these blocks look depending on where you put the contrast. Also some of the blocks such as this one does, has different colors in its background. Most of them have just the green, same green in the background. This one has mixed it up. It's almost as though she ran out of fabric or she got tired of, she got tired of putting together in one way and decided to just mix it up. Uh, so those are different. You can tell there's not a lot of planning with this quilt because she had a certain number of star blocks and she put them in where they would fit. So she put four here, four on the side, two on the bottom and two on the top. They are in asymmetric, they're in symmetrical areas so that they look the even on both sides. Um, some of the other blocks in this pattern are not. The second thing I like to look at is this, this large block here. There's several of these that are a half square triangle and they are the same fabric that is in the stars. Now again, this was probably part of a quilt that maybe never got made or extra pieces. I like here you can see how when she put these together with this star, you got a secondary pattern that started happening. However, she did not continue with that pattern. You can see here's the half square triangles that are green on top, but down here she switched it up to green on bottom. Now if she had kept it here to green on top, she could have had some of that secondary pattern going here. You can see here she did have a little bit more of that secondary pattern happening here with this star. But her rules seem to be, we all have rules when we make a quilt, her rules seem to be green on top, green on bottom, green on top for this row. Now the next thing that I notice about this quilt, and this really pops out at you, especially when you see it on camera, um, even more so, and that is these nine patch blocks. These were clearly uh, scrap blocks for another quilt entirely, and she decided to put them all together with this one. And it gives you this huge unexpected surprise because the colors are so different from everything else here. If she had had um, these in the same colors as the other blocks, more muted, then they would have um, blended right in, but instead they jump out at you. Um, and what I like too is the really unplanned part of it that she has a rule that she started, which is she's got them going in a diagonal, but then she has an extra up here. So my question is, why didn't she put it there? Why didn't she start them here? And she could have fit all of them in a diagonal. We don't know. But frankly, I don't think it matters. It's just fun. It's unexpected. Um, the other piece that I can see, uh, you can tell about this quilt, is that she had this fabric in the middle, this green and it's gorgeous fabric. And she clearly bought it because she really liked it. I think it's one of those fabrics that she didn't want to cut because she kept it into the large blocks. Now, because it is a large scale print, what happened when she put it into this quilt is it created more chaos looking. There's a lot more activity happening with this quilt. So your eye never seems to know where to quit. I love that aspect of the utility quilts. I love that. Um, this is someone who clearly is a quilter. This, everything here is cotton. I can also tell that I think this was made in the 80s or 90s by the fabrics. I'm just guessing, um, but they don't, it doesn't seem to be real old. Um, and so I think this was one that someone had a lot of extra pieces and just decided they wanted to sew one day and they did get the top together. So it's a nice utility quilt. Now in this quilt, there's a couple things that are really obvious by looking at it right away. One is that this quilt is made by someone who's a sewer and not a quilter. And the way I know that is because almost every single fabric in here except one is a fabric that you would use for sewing. Um, I see shirt fabric, I see dress fabric, I see corduroy for pants, we've got gingham, we've got uh, seersucker. 
The only exception is there's one little piece here. Actually, there's several pieces of this particular fabric. It's a green floral, and I recognize it from like the early 80s. So the age of this quilt, they say you can, a you can age, put an age on a quilt by its most recent fabric. Pretty sure that's the most recent. So this is someone who had a lot of sewing fabrics from the 60s and 70s, and then she decided to put this quilt together. Now looking at the construction of this quilt, it looks like she started here in this section. It looks like she had a lot of pinks and whites and she started here and then started with blues and started building around it. Once she got to about this big, she then started, she has this whole second area that is a lot of different colors in it. She added that on and then you can see she started adding from here and then this whole section up here and then one all the way down and she has some strips going up and down now if she had stuck with the strips going up and down I know from doing this type of sewing myself that you're able to keep it flatter it probably if she had done that but I think even that she struggled with and again it's because I don't think she was a quilter um, she was a sewer Okay, so we finally get to quilt number three in our series, another utility quilt. This one is a nice all over look. There are no particular fabrics in this one that jump out at you. Now this is a utility quilt that has been very much used. This one is a full quilt with the front and the back. Um, it's made of teeny tiny pieces of fabric and they are put together in squares. There's no way you would see those squares unless you're close to the quilt. From a distance, you really can't, and you have to get pretty close before you can see that's how it is put together. But that is how it's put together. And so you can see she went ahead and made a series of squares with all her different fabrics. These are small, tiny pieces, so she wanted to use up those little scraps, and that is what she's done. Um, these are all look to be about 60s or 70s fabrics. Uh, I like this quilt because it has been tied. So it is, it does have a front and a back to it. This one is not just a top. And when I say tied, I mean rather than um, quilting with hand by hand with needle and thread or with your sewing machine, this one has been tied. They took um, yarn in a uh, needle, went down through all three layers, up through all three layers, tied it in a knot and cut it off. And so I'll show you, you might not be able to see from there, but it is tied very closely. It's tied here and here and here and here in rows all the way across the, uh, the quilt itself. I like this, it's very nostalgic for me because my mother, when I started quilting when I was young, she, the first few quilts we did, I think we tied them. And I haven't seen that method in a really long time. But it's a fantastic way for a beginner to put a quilt together and actually get it finished. Tying is, is perfect for utility quilts, especially if it's something you know you're gonna use a lot and you don't wanna put too much effort into the craft of it. Um, this one was definitely made to use. It is very worn. It has been used and loved plenty. It's very faded on the back. You can, you can um, see that the threads make a pretty pattern on the bottom where it's been tied. I hope you start thinking about utility quilts. If you have a utility quilt or two that you've made, start thinking about them in a different way. You can see that the more of them you see and how they're constructed, there's really a lot that these quilts have to tell us and a lot of lessons we can learn from them. Thanks for joining me. And be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can do so here by clicking the subscribe button. That way you'll find out about new videos as they become available. So if you watched all the way to the end of this video, I wanted to give you a little bit of behind the scenes. Um, you might have noticed that my clothing attire changed through this video, and I, can, I just wanted to tell you the reason for that. I had started shooting this video, and I had my battery on my camera went dead. And I mean dead. And so I had to wait. Then there was a series of other things that I had to do and didn't have time to finish the, quilt, the, the video that day. And so this is a whole different day and a whole different quilt, but because of the magic of video, you get to see it all at once.